between your there's a difference between your thinking and your thoughts, and we must understand the difference. Your thinking is the process or the equipment. Your thought is the product. Your thinking is let's it's it's practically how you think. Your thought is what you think. Why is it important to know the difference? What you need to change is not what you think, but how you think. In the context of this scripture that says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So basically, it it's just means change how you think, and it will automatically change what you think. It's, it's, I, I, the way I often describe it is like this. Thinking is like an algorithm, like a thinking pattern. When A happens, it's like a program, a computer program. When A happens, perform function B. And then after that, perform function C. And then go to X and Y and Z, and depending on what happens again, go back to A. It's like uh, a pattern. Anybody with me? And then... It becomes the formula by which we process basically almost everything. We can see clearly now the difference between how we think and what we think. How we think being the model. Perform function X after Y and go to Z and go back to A. It is the, so, so it is the way we think, not just what we think. So if you really can't change how you think, you can't change what you think. And what God really wants to change is not just what we think, it's how we think. Because he knows if he can change how we think, he can change what we think. So it's your thinking recipe that first needs to change before your thinking can change. Your thinking recipe meaning, for instance, how you cook. And your thinking meaning what you cook. A change of ingredients would always, 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 always result in a change of taste. A change of ratio and formula will always tweak the taste of the same thing, on the other hand, of the same ingredients. So the question is, how do I start? Where do I begin? How do I start? Where do I begin? First of all, the first thing is start paying attention to how you are thinking, not just what you are thinking. Hmm. Observing your default responses to situations. Many of us do not pay attention to our default thought responses to situations. Why did I think like that? When, why and where is that coming from? Things like that. And then taking that thought and replacing it with the right one. It's basically like you're telling the whole cells in your body, no, we don't think that way. This is how we think. This is, we know this is not right. This is not who we are. This is who we are. We all seem to have certain ways of thinking that we don't challenge. And if you don't challenge those thoughts, nobody can. That's the truth. It says B. Now, that scripture is interesting. I always ask, I emphasize some parts so that it can make meaning. It says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's putting the responsibility to you. Because God can't do your part. <laughs> God can't do your part. There are too many instances in the Bible where people's hearts were hardened. And God, Jesus could not help them. God couldn't help them because their hearts were hardened. In fact, there's just one or two instances in the Bible where God had to prove to the person that your will is not stronger than mine. I'm going to 
see how far you want to go. Jonah being one case in the Old Testament, Paul, Saul means uh, being another case in the New Testament. So those are exceptions. The norm is that you repent and come to God and have a contrite heart. So many times when we're praying, God, break somebody's heart, break his heart, break his will. We have to understand that if that is not happening over decades, over months, it's not because God is not willing. It's because the person themselves have a will of their own. So we can't make a rule out of the exception. God can't do your part. You have a part. Be you. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Now, we have to understand also something foundational before we, I'm, I'm almost rounding off my thoughts on this. We are all tripartite beings, just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God in three persons. You're also a man in three persons. The Spirit, the soul, and the body. The Spirit is not the same as the body. The soul is not the same thing as the body, neither is it the same thing as the spirit. The flesh will still crave the same thing it craved before and after being born again. And the mind will likely think the same way it was before you were born again and after you were born again. Now, the part where the change then begins to happen is the mind. I always say to people, the mind is like the guy with the swing vote who votes for either the spirit or the body in every situation. And then the part it votes for becomes the majority. So if your mind votes for your, with your spirit or for your spirit, then the, the, the body is dominated. If your mind votes for the body, then the spirit is dominated. There's nothing the spirit can do. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what Paul says in this scripture not by the renewing of your spirit, but by the renewing of your mind, because your mind is where the action is. Your mind is the freeway where the will of God or the will of the enemy travels and transpires. Your mind is where the traffic is. Your mind is where the transactions take place. Your mind is the marketplace, the place of buying and selling. Your mind is the dashboard where the will of God or the will of the enemy is programmed. And guess what? You have a say in determining what is programmed or in changing what has been pre-programmed. You're going to have to say, and this comes to how, I'm almost done, um, because really, the most, one of the most important things to do when teaching anything, in, and many of us also are Bible teachers, is to make sure that we just don't teach the what, but we teach the how. Because if we don't teach the how, what we've successfully done is given people, who we, might, we might have mesmerized them, but we might not have educated them. We might have wowed them, but we might not have helped them. When we only give inform so much information, overload of information, but there is no application, the people remain the same. The mind is not renewed. The distance between you, your present self, and your new self is the transformation of your mind. Change happens at the speed of your openness to new information. So this is the how. We've gotten, we've gotten to the how part. You're going to have to say no to some thoughts. You're going to have to say no to some feelings and, 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 and say, well, though it's how I, it feels, but how it feels is not how it is. It's what God says it is, not how it feels. Mm. Because God never said how it feels is how it is. Mm. <laughs> Truth really is not a feeling. It's a knowing. Mm. Truth is a knowing, not a feeling. If I told you that if you left, um, let's say, Virginia to travel to New York or to California, and you're my, I'm your roommate, and I tell you somebody broke into your car, they broke your windows, they broke everything. Maybe it's April 1, you know. 
and something happened, this and that is broken, and you're coming back thinking, how am I going to pay for this? I don't even have insurance, and all of that. And you're so worried, and you're, you're so, just so brokenhearted, God, why me, and all of that. And you get home, before you enter the house, you see that your car is intact. And then you get in and say, oh, it was just April Fool's. You know, I was just messing with you, and all of that. Now, the feeling you had on the plane, and all the places your mind has gone in the plane, was that really translating to the reality of the situation? No. It's not, it was just nothing than a feeling. That's all it was. It was not a description or it was not an accurate uh, translation of the situation. It was just a feeling. So that's how the devil messes with, if he can really mess with your feeling, he can get to your heart. So he is, is more preoccupied with messing with our feeling and then messing with our thoughts because of that, because feelings and thoughts are like a loop. The one affects the other. And we have got to stand on the word of God because that is the reality. You have, you have to use the knowledge of the word of God to fight the feeling, any negative feeling. You have to use revelation of the truth to fight off a feeling. Truth is not a feeling, it's a knowing. We have to remind ourselves of that. It's not a feeling, it's a knowing. So things may look difficult right now, but I know that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and have all who are called according to his purpose. So this is, doesn't feel good, but I know it's working for my good. That's a knowing. So I'm not going to go with this feeling. I'm going to go with the knowing. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. That's the knowing. No matter what is happening, it's not the feeling that I have right now. I know that I can overcome this situation and I know that it's all going to come out well in the end and I'm going to win because that is the knowing. That is what God has said about it. It's not about the feeling. Sometimes, some, some, sometimes we say, I know, I don't know what God is going to do. I don't know what God is going to do. I know I've changed. I stopped myself from saying that. I know what God is going to do. God is going to deliver me. I just don't know how he's going to do it. That's right. I know what God is going to do. He's going to send me help. I just don't know how he's going to do it. I know what God is going to do. He's going to supply my needs. I just don't know how he's going to do it. Great is that means, you know, my God is able to make all grace abound towards me. Period. So I don't know how I'm going to cope with my new job, but I know that God is able to make the grace abound towards me. I don't know how I'm going to survive the next year or the rest of this year in my new responsibility at home as a mother, as a father, as a wife, as a, as a colleague. But I know that God is able to make what kind of grace? All grace, including the grace for work, including the grace to be a father, including the grace to be a mother, including the grace to be a mentor and a mentee, it's the grace to be to, to, to mother my kids, to, to father my kids, to grace to be a good husband. All grace. That's the truth. It's not a feeling. It's the truth. Every message you would ever hear, every new, this is my closing lines, every new revelation through study or you will ever get in faith and righteousness and holiness, love, joy, peace, and the likes will all at some point require a mind renewal for them to begin to take effect. You can pray, fast all you want, confess, which are all important, don't get me wrong, but none of this would exempt you from the renewing of the mind. After all said and done, you're still going to have to be intentional about the way you think, about the things that you've been praying about and fasting about, or else you may not see the change. Awesome. Truth is not a feeling. So let, when the feeling comes, let's know that that's not the indication of the truth. Because next time, feelings are always going to show up, but they don't change the truth. I don't, I don't want to go on. I just want you guys to... to to, to um, share your thoughts and make your contributions. Anybody? I'm happy to share. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, so uh, just, first I just wanna say thank you for, um, for, for going over the, 
for every time you draw the picture and you paint the picture uh when you use coffee it hit me i love coffee so <laughs> when you're talking about uh thinking is the process is basically uh like the machine and yeah. then the product is the coffee mm. and then one word that really strikes me when it comes to transformation and you mentioned it as well is the word intentional mm. uh the word intentional uh makes me think of the water that we use in a coffee machine it makes me think of the filter that we also use. Hmm. When it comes to the things that we think of, if we don't have the appropriate filter, if we're not filling it up with water, hmm. it, it goes straight to our heart. Hmm. And it makes me think of, uh, yeah. of, of Luke, um, Luke 745. Hmm. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil for out of the abundance of the heart mouth his speak. mouth speaks and and when i when i when whenever anyone speaks right we always want to know is it are you speaking life or are you speaking death mm -hmm. and that moment where you catch yourself um and uh where, where you catch yourself or you hear someone uh that's speaking death you know all that needs to be done is just need to add water and then you need to clean out that filter uh -huh. and i think that's the intentional thing of uh one of the biggest things is intentional because the thoughts the thoughts are always going to be there right so we have to have that filter so we can get the right information in our in our body and all the other thoughts that are horizon the world always brings to us we need to know how to clean that out so mm -hmm. i i just really love the word intentional because uh if you're if you're not intentional uh with doing it um you know unless you're only surrounded by christian people we know that's a hard thing to do <laughs> we're going to be surrounded by a lot of secular people as yeah. we're going grocery shopping as we're doing our our day-to-day -day routines so it's just even the things that you hear sometimes it's not even coming from you sometimes just the the things that you hear uh indirectly can just come into your thoughts and um and i just i loved uh when you when you when you use coffee because i was like ah this all, this makes too much sense to me <laughs> so it, you know it, just just being as intentional as possible uh, is is huge and um that moment again when you when you ever hear yourself speaking death um or, or you ever hear anyone doing that you know automatically okay this is a this is a thought process because that's what that's what's in the abundance of someone's heart that's what they speak so that's a really good clue um for for whenever you think it's time to change that filter you know what bro anytime somebody is speaking negative to you they're programming you mm. They're programming your computer. They're programming, I mean, if you are allowing negative thoughts, they are programming you. They are changing, they are hard coding the wrong program into your subconscious because then the, what you begin to expect out of life, what you begin to, how you begin to react, and from that moment is altered, is affected by that programming, mm. you know? And I remember our thinking works like, like a Facebook or Twitter or comp any computer algorithm. It's when A happens, perform function X. When X, after X, go to Y. After Y, go to K, then re repeat the process. That's yeah. the thinking system. Yeah. And that's what we need to reprogram. Before we, we, if we don't change our thinking, we cannot change our thoughts. Correct. And negativity is always broadcasting we have to shut down our device and don't receive that broadcast but there are times that we we have to make we can't help it we have to make contact with people you know at work in workplace people doing all sorts of things swearing doing all sorts of negativity the news and all of that so what what i tell myself is that sometimes yes we can't help but making contact because it's with our mind that we make contact with people all around us but it's almost like a lint roller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you use it, it's going to pick up dirt. It's going to pick up stuff. Okay. So next morning, what do you do when you, you take off that layer and renew it and make it as brand as fresh and new? That's what wow. happens in the presence of God. Wow. But it's normal to have to take off layers every day. Mm -hmm. Take off the layer of yesterday as you begin today. Take off those layers. When you get in a meeting or somebody in a conversation and it was negative, take off that layer. Excuse yourself, go to the bathroom if you have to do. 
take off the layer, renew. That renewing is a continuous process. It doesn't, it's not a thing you say, I have renewed. No, mm -hmm. you have to keep renewing. It's like food. You don't say, I have eaten yesterday, so I don't need to eat today. Mm -hmm. The word of God doesn't work like that. Food doesn't work like that. The word of God is faith food. It's spiritual food. You have to keep eating. The Bible says desire uh, the word as a newborn babe. What do newborn babes do? They eat all the time. You feed them now, 30 minutes, they want to eat again. You feed them again, they want to eat. That's, that's how the Bible says we should have appetite for the word of God. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just don't want to keep dominating this. this particular this. scripture talking about form. Um, the common word to conform, that's conformity, and um, transform. Mm -hmm. And the common word there just happens to be form. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm just thinking of what forms are thinking. I, I read one statement further in the scripture, in that scripture that... Um, we're looking at, and it just says that the next line says that you may discern the mind of God. So, not um, being a non conformist, mm. if that's the right word, mm. to things on the, of this world and being transformed by the renewing of your mind is for the purpose of understanding the mind of God. So it makes me see that um, to not be conformed to this world, and that transformation, as you have said, is a continuous thing, yeah. and it's a lot of unlearning. Yeah, a very powerful statement. It's a lot of unlearning. Yes. 